Well, good day there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I have returned to the scene of the crime, so to speak. It wasn't the very first episode of the typewriter video series, but it was the second, maybe the third or fourth also. I was sitting at this very table in a city park in Northeast Albuquerque. I had four typewriters laid out. I think it was the earlier uh, Royal Mercury I had, it was actually a year later than this one in terms of model, but it was my older Royal Mercury. I had a Hermes rocket, I had the blue Webster XL 747, and I had one of my Olivetti Letter 22s, the one with the British keyboard. I don't have any of those four typewriters anymore in my collection. That was 2016, five years ago as of the time of this recording. I thought I'd return back here and talk a little bit about this series and what I've covered and how my typewriter adventure has evolved over the years. Stay tuned. Well, when I first started these videos, I just had a sense that, you know, the typewriter revival movement was well underway, but I didn't really see too many videos that were covering the whole subject of the typewriter revival or covering in detail about how you use typewriters, how you fit them into your life, how you use them as creative tools, all of those kind of aspects of it. And over the course of the last five years, I've you know, done a lot of videos about a variety of things, not just about the details of reviewing individual typewriters like these and how they work in detail. And I've done a number of repair videos, but they're not that many repair videos, not nearly as exhaustive as a professional like Dwayne Jensen of uh, Phoenix Typewriter Channel, for instance. I recommend going to his channel for sure for really in-depth repair stuff. I've done a few repair videos, like I say, but not that many. But I have done a lot of videos covering how we fit typewriters into our creative lifestyles and things about what kind of typewriters to use, what kind of paper to use, uh, you know, just all the various aspects of creativity with typewriters, how they fit into our lives. And I didn't really know that I would be doing that when I first started this channel. You know, I, the first few videos, if you go way back to 2016, you'll see they were mainly about, you know, addressing the rank beginner uh, and how to use a typewriter. Uh, how do you move the carriage? How do you set the margins? How do you ensure the ribbon is moving properly? How do you type with it? And you know all the basics of typewriter operation. It's kind of like teaching somebody to drive a stick shift. It was very basic and it was aimed toward the beginner. And a lot of my videos actually have been really aimed toward the beginner. The idea being that if there are more and more people that are coming into the typewriter movement who don't know anything about typewriters, those people really need to be you know, brought up the right way, started on a good footing, and to understand how to use their machines, what the limitations and the strengths are of each kind of machine, and how to fit that into their creative life. So that was a fun thing to discover for myself, because this whole adventure of mine has been a process that I didn't know where it was going. And it, I grew and evolved as I made these videos. I discovered things making each video. You know, when I go out and cover some topic and in the process of doing it, I discover something for myself that I share with you guys. It's been an interesting process. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, using the typewriter as a venue or as a, as a means for discovering enhanced creativity. And that's been a, quite a fun thing to experience. Well, as I've looked through my past library of videos and seen how my typewriter journey has evolved. It's interesting, when I first started this channel, it was mostly ultra portables. In fact, my typewriter collecting started with the other Royal Mercury that I had acquired from John Lewis in the middle aughts. And that was when I first became, I guess, enamored with typewriters the idea that I wanted a good small typewriter that I could carry with me somewhere and type with. That's what kind of caused my infatuation with typewriters. And I think the first part of my collecting was mainly focused on small portables. And then I got more into 
medium-sized portables as I discovered that the quality of the writing experience often was superior with those kind of machines because they were just engineered better and built for uh, more serious use. In the last few years, I've discovered that I really like type bar electrics, which is kind of an interesting thing to say because my first uh, typewriter usage was in when I was in high school, and we had our family Hermes 10 that my dad had bought for my oldest brother, but of course I was able to use it also. And that was a type bar electric. I didn't really appreciate at the time how nice they were, but looking back on it, and of course we still have that typewriter in the family, it's a really fast machine. You can really type fast and with very little finger fatigue on an electric type bar machine and still get that kind of pseudo mechanical uh, typewriter experience because you have a moving carriage and flying type bars. My collection refined over the years. I have found that I was really interested not in historic machines that you would put on display, but I was really interested in maybe mid-century machines that functioned really well. I was interested in typewriters that worked flawlessly and put out as good of an imprint as possible and had a good uh, touch experience, right? So they were usable machines that put out good copy, good quality print on paper. That's where my focus has been, really, because it's been not only about the interest in typewriters as mechanical objects, but it's really about using them as creative tools, and that's what interests me a lot. And then in the last year or so, a couple of years, uh, I also got interested in full-size typewriters. It initially started with a friend of mine here in town loaned me her Olympia SG3. She was going to give it to me. And I seriously considered it. I had it here at the house. I did a few videos about it. It's a wonderful machine, wonderfully engineered. But the machine itself was a wide carriage machine, and the, the carriage was kind of hard to, to do a return on, the carriage return, because it was so massive. It just didn't fly as easy as another machine. I did finally get the Royal KMM from local typewriter technician John Lewis. That typewriter was remarkable because... It was my first full-size standard upright typewriter, and it types so well, and I can touch type on it so well because of the layout of the keyboard. And it really was the typewriter that helped me to correct my touch typing technique on manual typewriters and helps me to strengthen my fingers because it's so easy to type on. And now I find myself being able to touch type with much greater ease on other machines because of the KMM. And then earlier this year, my Aunt Pat passed away and I inherited her Royal 10, which I took home, cleaned up, and put all new rubber on. And now that's the second full-size upright typewriter in my collection that I really love. I don't really see myself acquiring any other full-size typewriters, uh, standard typewriters, just because uh, it's hard to store them. Those two machines are located prominently in my office studio, and they're available to be used at any time. I really enjoy them. So my typewriter collecting, I guess you'd say, has evolved from ultra portables to bigger typewriters that are more optimally suited for serious writing. And that's kind of where this channel has really evolved, making typewriters to be as well-suited as they can be for your creative use as creative tools, not just as pretty objects, mechanical objects to put on display. That's me. Uh, other collectors uh, have a different approach, but for me, they're, they're to be used. And so they need to be as finely repaired to be brought up to as fine of a degree of usability as possible. And the ones that don't fit the bill, that are kind of awkward or clunky to use, those are the ones that don't stay in my collection because that's not what interests me. They have to be usable. All of these ultra portables right here, these are the three last remaining ultra portables in my collection. Calibri, Underwood Portable, Royal Mercury. All three of these I'm very happy to use as creative tools. Uh, the Underwood, I would say, is marginally an ultra-portable. It is, has the footprint of an ultra-portable. It's just a little taller, and it's currently uh, screwed down into its base, which makes it very convenient to carry with the lid attached, set it down someplace, uh, remove the lid, and just go typing. So 
that's why it's considered by me to be an ultra portable. Anyway, that's been kind of the evolution of my typewriter's journey. Uh, maybe the other thing is I've learned a lot more about ribbons, for instance, the various kinds of typewriter ribbons and how they work and how they work for you. Or you have a choice of various kinds of nylon ribbons that are inked in various degrees of heaviness and also a choice of silk ribbons or cotton ribbons available here in the United States. So it's a great time we live in. You can still get a lot of different kinds of ribbons material wise and there's a lot of people reselling ribbons not just uh, some of the cheaply made ones on Amazon for instance but some better quality ribbons and I discovered uh, recently that ribbons have a lot to do with the quality of your writing experience and you need to to fine-tune the particular ribbon for your machine to get the best performance out of it. Now there's another element to typewriters that I really need to discuss and I haven't really mentioned it that much on this channel I don't believe and that is that at one period, I was a more prolific writer than I am now. I would say it was the period around the mid-aughts, 2004 or 5, up to maybe 2010, and tapering off around 2015. And part of the reason was because on my long weekends, I found myself going down to my favorite coffee shop, winning coffee with a, a pack, a bag with a notebook and pencils or pens or whatever and you know doing a lot of writing and sitting around and just being in this public space that it's filled up with a lot of creative people and I enjoyed that kind of atmosphere to write in. Nowadays I find that my spare time is taken up more with wanting to continue making these videos every week. I really feel compelled to do so. Part of the reason is I really enjoy the video production process, but it's also taken away time from, potentially, I, I could argue, it's taken away time that I could be using for writing. Uh, also, I don't do as much photography anymore. And, you know, part of this could be COVID-related. Maybe the whole shutdown thing that happened in 2020, I haven't really totally gotten over yet or haven't returned to my old habits but also my favorite coffee shops no longer there and so you know things have changed in my life and I find myself hanging around closer to home I don't do as much writing but I really want to uh, get back to writing short stories and working on a few longer pieces and that reminds me we do have now the next uh, installment of the cold hard type project, which is Margin Release, or Tales of Trespass, which uh, Richard Polt has just announced uh, recently on his uh, blog. And I really would like to write a story for that project, if I could. But also, I really want to do some more, you know, short story writing in, in some of the projects I've already done, the Bill series, for instance, the coffee shop photographer typist guy that I've written a few stories about. I'd like to do that and maybe work on a few longer pieces that I started a decade ago and haven't really gone anywhere. But that's the thing about writing is it is its own thing. It, it, it takes time to do well. And you have to carve out time in your schedule to do it. So I have other things going on. I have this channel, these machines. I, ha I like to be creative about them every week. But that's not the same thing as actually writing. Using a typewriter is not the same as writing on a typewriter. So that's something that I have to remind myself every day that I need time to do it. And one of the ways that I find is a great creative outlet is uh, the one typed page blog uh, published by Daniel Marlowe. And if you don't know about that, just look for one type page. It's on the Typosphere blog. Uh, and you can participate in it. Just email him a, a photo of a typewritten page. So I find myself consciously writing now for that. And it's a very interesting process because it's not like you're writing for yourself, a private journal. You're writing for other people to read it. And it's a certain select circle of regular writers who participate that you're writing to be a part of that community. So that's been very interesting and it's a positive thing that uh, helps uh, 
me to remain creative, but I do want to do more serious writing with these machines, not just talking about them on videos. So when I started this channel, I didn't really know how many episodes it would be. I didn't think it was going to be a limited series, but I just didn't know. I didn't really think about it. And we're up to past episode 280, and I, I'm thinking at this point that I'm just going to keep making typewriter videos. I don't really have any plans to stop this uh, series. It's just typewriters are part of my life, and if I find new things to talk about that might interest you, I'll keep making these videos, and I hope you'll keep watching. But in the meantime, if you'd like to request particular videos that you'd like to see, maybe perhaps I have the resources to make them. I do get requests quite often to cover, you know, certain typewriters, uh, and I don't have those machines in my collection, so I can't necessarily make videos about that. Or uh, some in-depth uh, repair process where I don't really feel like pulling the carriage off of one of my machines, for instance, just to show you how to do that, because almost all my machines are working fine. And so in that case, I would just refer you to somebody like Dwayne Jensen of Phoenix Typewriter Channel, who has already done a lot of those kind of videos. But if there's something that I can manage to do, I'd love to cover these subjects. And I know just, for instance, this week, I have a new viewer who is new to typewriters, and he uh, left a question on what kind of paper should I use in my typewriter? And I thought, okay, there's a video, <laughs> right? What kind of paper should you use in a typewriter? Maybe that'll be another video that comes up this week. Hopefully it will be. But anyways, if you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, like to see me cover certain topics, drop a note down below. And in the meantime, this is a beautiful afternoon still. You know, this is the kind of autumn that we wish would just continue on and on, but we know it's going to get cold eventually here in Albuquerque. But I'm going to sit down here and maybe type out some thoughts here on some paper, and I wish you guys the very best, and as always, yes, stay creative. Bye-bye for now.